that's one of the reasons I hate jobs. I was a minimum wage checkout chick. It was my first day and one of my new managers, Carly, was giving me an orientation, explaining what I was to do. So you scan grocery for two hours and then you get a half an hour break and then you scan groceries for another two and a half hours until your shift ends at 8pm. And mistakenly thinking orientation was over, I nodded and hopped into my lane. Wait, what are you doing? Ah, uh, I was going to start working. Should, should I not? No, no, orientation's not over yet. I've got to tell you about what happens after your shift ends. After my shift ends. Here, she said, pointing to a small dark room. After your shift ends, you take your till back there to cash up and count it. Ah, uh, and how long will that take? Well, if you don't want to lose your job for stealing, you need to double check and triple check it all balances so for a newbie like you probably 30 minutes 30 minutes D do i get paid for that <laughs> paid no it's part of the job and that was waking up early for work each day especially in the winter on dark icy winter mornings i'd set my alarm each day for 8 23 a.m and since the car windshield would freeze over in the night i'd put the jug on to boil some water while I took the fastest shower known to man. I'd then throw some clothes on and then take my boiled water and gently pour it over my frozen windshield, praying it wouldn't crack. By 8.36 a.m., like clockwork, I'd pull out of my driveway each day, which meant I would pull into my office car park by 9.36 a.m. That gave me just enough time to be at my desk by 9.38. I could feel the pulsing glares of my boss on me, but because I was late by less than 10 minutes, he could never be bothered doing anything about it. Speaking of that boss, in my early 20s, I was working in marketing for a retail company in a tiny office with a few other lovely ladies working admin. My boss would micromanage the admin staff to death. One poor girl, Rachel, would often come into the office looking half alive. It was her job to be on call 24-7 for our biggest overseas clients. And do you think she got paid overtime for her 2 a.m. angry customer calls? Nope. I quickly realized what I was in for on my first day of work. Sarah, be excited because in this office, we like to have fun, my boss said as he pointed to a photo on the wall. It was of my new 19-year-old coworker, Kelly, passed out drunk on the floor. Later in the day, I asked Kelly about it. She looked mortified. Yeah, so before the party, I told the boss that I wasn't going to come because I didn't drink and that I'd never had alcohol before. He said to come anyway and that I'd have a great time, so I went. And she told me the story. Later in the evening, our boss came up to her and handed her a drink. Not wanting to offend him, she hesitated, so he assured her, Oh no, don't worry, it's just got a bit of 4% alcohol in it, you'll be fine. So she drank it, and as she did, she spluttered, and he burst out laughing. It turns out that drink had vodka in it, which was 40%, not 4%. And so, yeah, Kelly got completely wasted, passed out on the floor, and my boss took a photo and pinned it to our office wall. I was recently having coffee with a business mentor I'd always really looked up to, Mark. And he said to me, you know, Sarah, you're just like me. And I was flattered. Thank you, Mark. That means quite a lot coming from you. I guess our similar cultural background as Kiwis makes us quite alike. Oh, uh, yeah, that too, I guess. But... I was more thinking about how, like me, you're really nice, but also just a little bit socially awkward at the same time. I am a bit socially awkward, and you better believe when I was 15, I was really socially awkward. There was this one guy on checkout, Jonathan, that I had a bit of a teenage crush on. I kept trying to talk to him at the end of our shifts when we were counting our tills out back, and he would barely acknowledge my presence. Finally, after two months, I successfully cracked a joke about work, and this time he actually laughed. <laughs> hey, I'm Jonathan, he said as though I had no idea who he was. Who are you? And I was like, oh man, I might actually be in. I might actually be in. And right at that moment, the door burst open and in stormed one of our managers, Laura. Sarah, she screamed at me. What are you doing? How are you so stupid? Why do I have to deal with imbeciles like you? How can you not do just one 
simple thing right. And I was so shocked and mortified at being yelled at in front of my co-workers, especially Jonathan, that I burst into tears. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. What did I do? Your till last week was out by 40 cents. A year later, I was sitting in my history class and our teacher was like, all right, everybody, all right, shut up, stop talking, stop it, shut up, shut up. I have an announcement. We have a new student teacher. She's never taught before, so be nice. Everybody, please say hi to Mrs. Atwood. Hi, Mrs. Atwood. And Laura looked at me and I looked at her and she looks back at me and I look back at her and she looks back at me and then smiled. Hi everyone, she said really sweetly. It's wonderful to meet you all. I'm really excited to be teaching you. And to my surprise, she was really nice. And you know what? Mrs. Atwood ended up being hired by the school full time and to this day is one of the most beloved teachers there because she's so nice. Laura didn't scream at me that day because she was actually angry my till was out by 40 cents. She screamed at me because she was stressed. Why? Because she spent most of her waking hours working a job she hated. But now that she was working a job she loved, everything changed. And so that taught me a very important lesson.